So I recently did a video on choline and muscle performance. Again, this didn't come out of Bodybuilder magazine. It, did, it was published or it was um, covered in the American uh, College of Sports Medicine uh, annual meeting in Minneapolis. And it, <clears throat> I was actually able to find a little bit more detail on it. The, um, the researcher, Dr. Shang Wook Lee, covered... Um, gave supplements uh, of choline, three different levels of supplements of choline to 50 to 69 year olds and had them do some resistance training. I'll get a little bit deeper into that in a few minutes. Uh, he's, he said that he uh, found some very significant, surprisingly significant results. After finding the actual results, I would agree with him. I found out some other things too. Uh, one, for example, was that his um, his research was supported by the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. So <clears throat> that all, all automatically raises some eyebrows, right? However, when you get into the detail, I don't think I don't think you could eat enough eggs. I, I can't imagine eating enough eggs on a daily basis to provide the supplementation that he had to provide. So we'll get a little bit more into detail uh, on that in just a minute. But first, my name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E I'm a physician. I uh, started off in emergency medicine, got very frustrated with early heart attacks, stroke, disability, um, things that people brought into the ER with them. I uh, went to uh, Hopkins to get training and prevention, ended up running the uh, postgraduate program there in prevention and have been focused on teaching primary care docs um, how to do prevention in my career ever since. Um, this is the prevention channel. We're uh, all about helping you understand the biochemistry and other uh, biology, medicine uh, behind prevention and how to keep from having that heart attack rather than hoping that somebody's going to be able to cure you after you have it. Um, <clears throat> so again, in uh, choline, eggs, and uh, muscle performance part one, I covered this research by a fellow named Dr. Chang Wook Lee. He's uh, been focused, he's at uh, University of Houston, Victoria, and he's been focused on um, uh, muscle performance and cholesterol for a long time. And it was maybe because he knows somebody at the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association and they're giving him funding or something. I, I don't know. But um, <clears throat> well, there's, a, there's some science, uh, scientific rationale behind it as well. Um, cholesterol is a significant part of, the, um, of nerve and muscle mem cell membranes. As uh, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Wook Lee's uh, research continued to develop, he began to wonder, well, are there micronutrients that are often found with, uh, with cholesterol that impact this? And sure enough, choline is well known. I covered some of the basics on that uh, last time. I'll cover those in just a second, but uh, first a couple of comments. Uh, Infants, for example, need significant amounts of choline and cholesterol in order to build their brains and nerves. One of the questions we'll get into in just a minute is how much um, adults need. Now, for those of you who are into um, more of the biochemistry of uh, prevention, there's been a lot of debate and, and focus around methylation over the past few years. What has methylation got to do with this process? Well, actually, Choline is a major um, actor in the different methylation cycles. How can that be? Why is that? Well, that gets into a little bit more basic um, biochemistry. Choline is what we call a quaternary ammonium. Uh, a quaternary ammonium, don't panic it's, or, or count this out. Just listen for a second. It'll become clear. Nitrogen is the key component of, a, uh, of an ammonium ion. It's, again, ammonia that you smell. It's got a 
a very characteristic smell. It's got a nitrogen plus four hydrogens. Um, choline, instead of having four hydrogens, has four methyl compounds, and one of those is hydroxylated. That's what that OH is. Well, that's a lot of very densely packed meth methyl groups, isn't it? So again, helps you understand the role that um, <clears throat> choline has in uh, methylation. Now, to start to get a little bit deeper into muscle performance, you have to be aware of what we call neurotransmitters. Acetylcholine is one of the major neurotransmitters. It's the chemical used by the nerves to transmit a, um, a nerve pulse, a, a information from one nerve to another. It's also used to transmit from a nerve to a muscle, to tell a muscle to fire. And acetylcholine is made from choline and acetate. So again, we start to connect some of these dots. Now let's go back to the research that I mentioned a few minutes ago. I was a little bit frustrated earlier on that I couldn't find. I found a comment saying from Dr. Lee in the press release saying, I expected something like I expected to see an impact, but not nearly as much as I did. So here, I was able to find a little bit more detail on it, and I would agree with him. It was a significant impact. Now, first of all, what did they, this wasn't all just supplementation. They uh, put these 50 to 69 year olds through some significant resistance training. What they did was 12 weeks of resistance training, three times a week, three sets uh, of eight to, 10, eight to 12 repetitions each with 70% of maximum strength in, the, in that rep. So again, we're talking about reps and sets starting to sound like uh, resistance training, and, and it is resistance training. If you're 50 to 69 years old and you're not doing resistance training, yeah, you can stop the video right now and go out and start doing some of that. It is critical to our health. Um, one of the key reasons has to do with diabetes and insulin resistance. Resistance training improves. Um, it's a major part of lifestyle improvement for the major component of aging, and that is insulin resistance. Um, <clears throat> significant resistance training can drop your blood sugar and uh, keep it down for up to 48 hours. So as you can see, these were eight to 12 reps each, three sets, three times a week, so, uh, and multiple types of exercises. So these people were getting some really good, solid resistance training. Now, what, did the, what happened in terms of actually uh, actual impact? So the guys that had low supplementation had a 20% improvement. Guys that had medium, and, or guys and ladies that had medium and high supplementation had a 47% improvement in strength and performance. So huge, uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Lee. I'm surprised at the amount of impact that choline supplementation had. Uh, they also looked at thigh muscle improvement, 12% um, improvement for the low supplementers. Again, 47, 46% improvement for the guys with medium and high supplementation. So, uh, it does appear that choline does have a significant role to play. But what about the, our industry guys, the U.S. Poultry and Egg Group? Well, <clears throat> I think we're gonna find out as we start looking at this that, uh, I mean, it may have made some sense for them to, to fund it, but on a practical basis, maybe not. Um, probably more just uh, reputation than anything else. What is this? This is the uh, EPA requirements or recommendations for uh, choline at different age periods. As, we men as I mentioned earlier, from zero to six months and seven to 12 months, there's significant um, requirements for uh, choline, 160, 150 milligrams per day. Uh, as you get older, that um, increases a little bit. As you get to 15 and plus years, it's 400 milligrams or 500 milligrams, depending on who you talk to. 
Well, <clears throat> how does that go back, these four or 500 milligrams, how does that go back and correlate to the research that we just looked at? Well, if you looked at the Lee study, they were looking at a total of uh, 400 milligrams in the low group and almost a gram and sometimes a gram or more in the heavier people in these uh, in these groups so a gram total of choline in a day well now let's go look at some numbers associated with sources for choline with liver you get five ounces you get a half a gram so <clears throat> You got to get 10 ounces of liver every day to get the kind of, uh, of uh, choline that you saw in Dr. Lee's study. How about um, cauliflower? Did you know that it was a source of choline? Well, it is, but you'd have to have about four pounds of cauliflower in a day to give you that much choline. How about uh, uh, egg? Oh, the egg council. You can get... 147 grams of choline in a large egg. Well, that would translate out to about five eggs per day um, with the yolk. Obviously, it's coming from the yolk. So, um, I, I'll go through some more of these, but I, I think you're starting to get my point. Uh, the other uh, uh, plant sources, broccoli, spinach, uh, wheat germ. You know, with broccoli and spinach, you'd have to get four or five pounds per day. With uh, spinach, you'd have to get, uh, what, seven pounds. Uh, wheat germ, four cups a day. Soybeans, four cups a day. Milk, four quarts a day. So again, bottom line is, I don't think any dietary source, even liver and eggs, is a long-term practical uh, way to achieve the kind of one gram per day that this uh, Dr. Lee was uh, using in his demonstration of improvement of performance with choline in 50 to 69 year olds. Thank you for your interest.